My subject today is how to be joyful. And then I, I wrote down a couple of statements. Happiness is the result of what happens. Happiness is the result of what happens. Joy is not a virus that you catch. Joy is the result of discipline, and joy is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says joy is a fruit of the Spirit, and therefore must be cultivated. So I have come to the pulpit today feeling that very probably the Lord wants me to talk about joy. And so let's turn, if you would, in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, and let me read verse 4, and then we'll turn back to chapter 3 and read just a part of verse 1. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Brother Jim, would you get to the organ and, and find the right key for me so that we can sing this verse? All right? Have you found it in your Bible? Philippians 4.4. 4. Let's everyone aloud read the verse. Now, some of you have different translations, but it'll all say the same thing. Verse 4. Here we go. Are you ready to help me? Say it out. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's the word for joy. Rejoicing. Let's, let's read it one more time. This is not an option. This is a command of the Scripture. Paul said, read it now. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Now, just before we sing that verse, let me read for you from the third chapter, where the Apostle Paul, in the same letter to the church at Philippi, and he's writing this out of prison. He's in prison when he writes. And he says in verse 3, Finally, my brethren... Rejoice in the Lord. And if you go through this book over and over again, Paul uses the word rejoice. Be joyful. Be joyful. Let's sing that, can we? Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice. to sing it, and those of you that are in the television audience, come on now, get your singer out, and let's everybody sing. If you're smoking, put your cigarette down and sing with us. If you're sitting there drinking the Pepsi Cola, put it down, and let's all sing together. Come on, rejoice. Come on, church, let's sing. Rejoice in the Lord. challenge out to you folks that are watching the way of television. I dare you to do something. Are you ready? Take a dare. I dare you to sing that with us again. And regardless of who's in the room, the hospital or the car, just put your hand up like this and wave and sing rejoice. Now, if you're driving in the car and you do that, a lot of folks will think you're waving at them. And that'll be all right. Just keep on doing it. And they'll wonder what it's all about. And let's all over the community, let's rejoice in the Lord, will you? Come on, now put a smile on your face. If other folks in the room, maybe they're not paying attention, they're going to look over there where you are and see you carrying on like this. And they say, aha, you're one of those strange ones, aren't you? Come on, let's sing together now, all of us. Rejoice in the Lord. is 
Great. Thank you. Now, how can we be joyful? Happiness de depends on our circumstance. Good things happen to us, makes us happy. Bad things happen to us, then we're sorrowful or sad. Our situation determines our happiness. There are a lot of folks find themselves right now. Some of you here in this sanctuary find yourself in a situation you're not happy. You're very unhappy, miserable. Now, you see, joy is, is a spirit. It's an attitude. Joy is a choice. We, we can choose to be joyful. And, and circumstance has nothing to do with it. And I'm going to prove that to you from the scripture. That our circumstance has nothing to do with our joy. That's the reason Paul says rejoice in the Lord always. He didn't put any exclusives, in, 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 in exclusions in there. He, he said rejoice, do it. That's a straightforward command from the scripture. So the Lord wants us to have an unspeakable joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, how can we do that? I want to start today sharing some things from the word with you that will help us have joy in our life. Now, if you've got a pencil, maybe you'd like to write these things down. Here's the first thing that I want to share. If we're going to be joyful, if we're going to rejoice, if we're going to have a life filled with this fruit of the Spirit, because joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. If we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's been given to us, not only that we may have love and other attributes, but that we might have joy. God wants us to be filled with joy. So here's the first thing. If you want to write it down, it might help you in the future. We must cultivate, we must cultivate a grateful heart. How I wish God would help me to emphasize that so that it would really become a part of all of us. We must cultivate a grateful or a thankful heart. A thanksgiving attitude. Now, since we're here in the book of Philippians, uh, all through this book, Paul mentions some things for which he is grateful or thankful. I don't have time to share all of them, but let me just reach in and see if I can't pull out two or three that, that can be applicable to our life. In, in verse 3 of the first chapter, Paul said, I thank my God. I am grateful. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now, Paul's in jail. He's there because of his testimony. And he is suffering in, in a prison environment. And he is writing back to the Christians that live in the city of Philippi, the Philippian Christians. And he is thinking about his brothers and his sisters back there. He's thinking about his friends. He's thinking about those that stand with him and pray for him. He's thinking about those that are loyal to him and those that he can depend upon. Those that are a blessing to him. Those that have been a part of his ministry. And if you'll read through the book, you'll find out that this is the way he felt about these people. And so as he thought about them, he was grateful. He was grateful for the remembrance of them, for the memory of these people that meant so much to him and his ministry. Now, won't you agree with me that we can look around and can think of fellow Christians, of friends and neighbors that have been a blessing to us and are a blessing to us. Some that stand with us in our hour of difficulty or our time of sorrow. Some that have supported us when, when we were maybe misunderstood. And some that stood with us even when they didn't agree with some of the things that we did or some of the attitudes that we had. And yet, when you think about them, they were people that supported and strengthened and sustained and blessed you. How many can think of someone that's been that to you? May I see your hand? I look out over this church today and I thank God as I remember you. Most of you I can call by name. 
Those of you that I can't, I certainly, I certainly can recognize your face and can look out as I minister. And there's so many of you that make it easy for me to preach. I just glance in your direction and I draw from you. And when I'm away from here, I remember that. And thank God for it. Seated here in the front of the church is a precious couple. No one said for them to do anything, but as I came into church today and stepped on the platform, he rushed up and just handed me, without a word, just handed me an envelope. And in the envelope was a beautiful card. And they had taken the time not only to go buy the card, but to sit down and to write a letter, a little note. And the note was pregnant with encouragement. He said, we want to write you this note just to encourage you in the ministry. Now, when you think of people like that, you can say like Paul did, I thank God for every remembrance of you. And so, you see, it's, it's, it's easy for us to develop that sort of a spirit of thanksgiving and gratitude. Because if we're not careful, we can become negative. And in, and, and in all of the friends that we have, if we're not careful, we'll be concerned about that one person out there that maybe has offended us or that one person that has not stood with us or supported us. And forget that for every one that lets you down, there are a hundred that stood by your side. And so Paul forgot the negative and he emphasized the positive because he was developing a joyful spirit. And you can't develop a joyful spirit with a negative response or attitude. I was thinking today, one of the brethren, he's seated here in the church, one of the leaders of our church, who followed me to my office door and put his arm around me. And, 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 and began to say things, and I, I could tell that he, he was anxious. He, he, he was reaching out to communicate to me that, that he was a laborer with us here in this body. And, and, and he wanted to say something that would make his pastor stand tall. Why, you see, those are the things for us to keep our eyes on and to keep our ears open to. And it's in that shadow that we are to walk because that will help us cultivate a spirit of joy that will lift us from despondency and discouragement and despair and will lift us up to the place where we can have a joyful spirit. And so I've come into the house of God today with a song that, that Paul wrote in that little verse, Rejoice in the Lord always, because I thank God for the remembrance of you. And there are many of you on television that you write to us, and we receive scores of letters from you precious people. I don't know that I've ever received a negative letter. Every letter that I've received from this tri-state community has been a letter of blessing. And so I can say with the Apostle Paul, I thank God for your words of encouragement, for your help, for those things that you write and say, and for those remarks that you are making that encourages us on in the ministry. And it's those memories... Not the memories of the negative, not the memories of those that would speak in a destructive way, but it's the memories of those of us and those of you that have stood strong and say, as for me and my house, we will serve God. Paul said, I thank God for the memory of folks like you. And I want to say that today. Cultivate a grateful heart by remembering people that bless you and are an encouragement to you. Now, since we're here in this first chapter, let me give us the second thing for which he was thankful, not only for his memories of, of good supporting people, but listen to this in verse, I'm going to start reading with verse 12. Now, hear this carefully because this is tremendous. Paul is writing, but he said, I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So that my bonds, now he's, he's in jail, and he's got chains on him. He said, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Now here's what happened. Paul was in jail, and he was chained to someone, and every time they would chain someone to him, he would witness to Christ, and they would find Christ, and so he would turn them loose. They would turn them loose from being chained to Paul and put someone else there. And every time he put someone else there, he was winning someone else. And, and these folks were going out, and the news got out, even into the palace. 
while Paul was still in prison. And many of the brethren in the Lord, becoming confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in that I do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Now, what's he rejoicing about? Not only for his memories, but he is thanking God that regardless of his circumstances, God works through the circumstances to bring glory to his own name. He said, I'm in jail. I've got some folks that are opposing my ministry out of envy, and some are doing it out of contention, and others are doing it out of love, but there is a boldness, and God is taking my circumstance that seems to be so negative and is using it for his glory, and I thank God for my circumstance. Are you able to do that? That takes discipline. When everything seems to be going in reverse. Have you ever driven your car when everything was going in reverse? Everything's going wrong. Have you ever lived very long when things weren't just right and you found yourself in a situation you said, what am I doing here? How can God get any good out of this? Paul learned not to ask the question. He said, I have developed an attitude of thanksgiving that wherever I am, whatever my circumstance, whatever the situation, whatever happens, I'm going to thank God. Now, you know, if the devil's doing that to us and we get to thanking God, how many know that's going to frustrate the devil? How many know that if the devil afflicts and attacks us, and right in the middle of it, we say, Lord, I thank you that you are being blessed in the midst of my trouble. How many know the devil's going to say, if they're going to praise God in the midst of trouble, I'm not going to trouble them anymore. And if God's doing it, then we need to thank God because he knows what he's doing. So Paul said, just discipline yourself to be thankful. Be thankful for what appears to be good and for what appears to be bad. Be thankful for the sunshine. Be thankful for the cloud. Be thankful for the rain. Be thankful when it's dry. Be thankful when the stocks are soaring. Be thankful when they're plunging. In everything, give thanks. You say, that's not easy. That's the reason I said you have to cultivate it. you got to grow it. Joy is not a gift. It's a fruit. Joy has to be produced, cultivated. Has nothing to do with my circumstance or what's happened. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hmm. Hallelujah. I got to watch. I'm going to quit preaching here and just, just shout because it feels so good. In the fourth chapter, let me give you the third place to be thankful. These are just three that I pulled out of the book. Paul said in verse 6 of Philippians 4, he says, Be anxious for nothing or don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, not only did Paul learn and cultivate gratefulness and thanksgiving when he remembered his friends and his associates, not only was he thankful in his circumstance, even when he was in bonds and in prison, and was uncomfortable, and things weren't going well, and there was resist resistance and opposition. But Paul also developed thanksgiving when he prayed. He said, when you come to God with a request, add to the request thanksgiving. He said, harness the two together. So if you're going to ask God something, say, Lord, I'm asking you to do this. Thank you, Jesus. He said, couple your request with thanksgiving. Now, you see, most of us, when we come to the Lord with request, we're so or overtaken with the request and with what we want that we forget, forget to respond back to God with what God wants. Remember the lepers? Nine of them were healed, and only one went back to be thankful. 
They were so concerned with their request and their need that they forgot to show gratefulness to the Lord. Now the Apostle Paul is expressing himself so beautifully. And he is saying, when you come to God with your petition and with your request, right in the middle of the request and the petition, say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the prayers you've answered in the past. I thank you for giving me access to you. I thank you for hearing me pray now. I'm glad you got everything under control. And you can't do that without developing joy. So help you God. It's cultivated, you see. And I picked out these three things because <coughs> usually it's these three things that disturbs our happiness. A friend fails us and we're unhappy. A circumstance is around us that's not comfortable and we're not happy. I'm into a problem and I've got a request and I'm burdened with my petition and my need and I'm unhappy. But God says, it's not your happiness that I'm most concerned about. It's your joyful spirit. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. So when you think of your friends, if they've let you down, rejoice in the Lord. When you look at your circumstance, doesn't look so good, rejoice in the Lord. When you got a need and the needs almost overwhelm you, don't center on the need. Rejoice in the Lord. And Paul said it so forcibly. He said, and again I say unto you, rejoice. Rejoice. Don't let these things keep your joy down. If we'll do it, there will be something of the character of Christ that will become a part of us and we can sing like the songwriter. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Planted like a tree by the water. I shall not be removed. If you're going to be joyful, you've got to cultivate a grateful heart. Now, I want to mention the second thing, and I have seven of these. Here's the second thing we have to do. We have to commit to our hope. We have to commit to our hope. Now look at it. It's in, it's in first, it's in Philippians chapter one. And let me read beginning with verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, body, whether it be by life or by death, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What was Paul saying? Paul was saying, I can't lose. I'm a winner. Because I'm not tied to the here and now. For me to die is gain. I got a future. I got a hope. It's not all over. The reverses of life. And as the whole world has been shaking, as the financial markets have been shaking, and people have become fearful, and they're not so stable and steady anymore, I'm glad that our hope is not in this present evil world. But we have a hope beyond this world system that regardless of what happens, we can say, Blessed be the Lord, for me to die is gain. Nothing can happen to me in this world that can rob me of my hope. And when we got hope, we got joy. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. And all I have to do is follow. I may stumble and I may be hindered on the way, but I'm on the way. And the devil can't do anything about it. Hope in the Lord and your joy shall be full. This concludes side one. Please advance the tape to the end for proper cueing of side two.